everybody. Today we're going to talk about the new configuration file capabilities in the Dreamplayer Professional. Dreamplayer Professional has a greatly expanded configuration file which allows you to set a lot of different parameters. So this is going to be a little bit of a long video but it's going to be very informative I hope. So we're taking the SD card, the micro SD card, I'm going to put it into an end adapter here and then we're going to put it into our laptop and edit it on the screen. Now we're looking at the contents of the SD card from the Dream Player. You can see all of our files as well as our config file. So here's our config. I'm going to open this up and then bring the screen full screen. What you'll notice is a lot of similarities to our other Dream Player products, but there's going to be a lot of new stuff in here as well. Um, we'll start at the top. These are general mode setups. So each one of these can be enabled or disabled by putting in the little uh, pound sign. So a pound sign begins a comment. So in this example, I could take and put a pound sign right there. And now the background mode will be turned off. I'm going to remove that. That'll turn background mode on. So for each one of these descriptions, you'll see a line that says something like background with a description. And then right underneath it, another line where it's actually enabling or disabling the mode. So in this example, background mode starts a zero track. It's called zero dash whatever you want dot wave on the SD card. So we're enabling background mode. Um, we can also enable auto start, um, which means it'll start any particular file. So in this case, I could say auto start equals five. And that will actually start the file named five dash um, dot wave. So we could set auto start if we wanted to have a particular file start automatically. Of course, background mode is our zero track. So that's what auto start does. It allows you to automatically start a track whenever the Dream Player powers up. Um, for every one of our tracks, we can actually set loop mode, which means that at the end of the file playback, the file will loop back to the beginning again. And the way these parameters or these settings work is I could say loop mode equals one, two, and five. So that means that track one, two, and five will loop every time they get to the end as opposed to stopping. Since I did not list track three or four, track three or four will actually stop at the end instead of looping. So I can enable loop mode doing that way. Um, Multi-random allows any track to pick within up to eight random tracks underneath it. So this would be, you'd name up to eight tracks, you know, one dash, um, you know, wave, one dash wave. If you have up to eight of those, it will just put them in a file or a list and then pick from them randomly. But the nice thing about the Pro is you can actually enable multi-random on a track by track basis. So I could do multi-random only on track one and two, but leave multi-random off for track three and four. And what that means is track three and four will operate normally just playing their single track, whereas track one and two will actually run in multi-random mode. So that's the difference um, in the Pro. Um, a new feature in the Pro as well is track resume. What track resume allows you to do is if you have a long file or a long track, when you stop the track by triggering it, it'll fade out, but then remember where it was, or where it left off, playback. So that next time it triggers, it'll actually fade back in and begin where you left off. So if you had a, say, for example, a 10 or 15 minute um, background track, you know, track that you want to play, um, this will allow you to re-trigger that track and not have it start all the way back from the beginning again. Um, this is something that people have requested for quite a while. So that's what track resume is. So those are kind of our general setting modes. Then for each one of the input triggers, we've got some configurations. Um, the first one being loop while trigger. Um, this allows any track on the list, just like the other ones, to actually continue to play and loop over and over and over as long as the trigger is held. So for example, if this was a, a motion sensor or something like that, I can actually tell it to continue playing back that track as long as the trigger is present. And this is on a track by track basis as well. So in, in this case, I've got track two and three set up to loop while trigger. So you can selectively add this for any track. And then of course, putting your pound sign back in comments it out. Similarly, we have a high trigger. What high trigger means is instead of being a active closed 
push button or active closed trigger, it'll actually be an active open. So meaning it just inverts the functionality of the trigger input to cause it to trigger when it's high instead of when it's low. So in this example, I could say high trigger on tracks one and four, and this will tell it that one and four are connected to something that's normally closed, and so they should trigger when they're high instead of when they go low. So that's what high trigger does. No re-trigger is very important on a motion sensor. Um, no re-trigger means that if you set the trigger or the trigger input comes while, during, while playing a track, it won't cause the track to fade out and then stop. So if you think of a motion sensor where there's constant motion and the motion sensor could be going on and off and on and off, you certainly don't want to have the track stop playing because somebody moved in the room. So no re-trigger means that it will play the track all the way to completion before looking or recognizing a new trigger input. And once again, this is enableable um, on a track-by-track -track basis. So I could set no re-trigger to any random number of tracks. Um, in this case, I've got it set for track one, two, and three. Um, and any list of tracks are just separated by commas. As you can see, I've got one, comma, two, comma, three. Um, that's how you set it up for different tracks. Um, toggle trigger is very handy for something like a day mode and a night mode. So think about just having a literal toggle switch that when it's in the, uh, in the open position, it plays the first track. When it's in the closed position, it plays the second track. So toggle trigger is meant for like a toggle, toggle switch. Um, something new in the Pro is that toggle trigger can work on any input, not just the first input. So in, in our lights or the MK2s, toggle trigger works on only track one, where this way I could say toggle trigger is on track one and four. So by turning on toggle trigger for one and four, that means I could connect toggle switches to, track, or to trigger input one and four. And then there's a 1A file and a 1B file, as well as a 4A file and a 4B file. So you can see I've described here 1a.wave and 1b.wave. The a and the b file are the two different files that are selected by the toggle switch. So let me scroll down a little bit here. We'll go up to our control outputs. So those are all the input configurations for general modes as well as uh, trigger inputs. Um, now we'll go into the control outputs. Um, each Dream Player Professional has four control outputs. Each one of those outputs can be set for different modes. Um, control start means it will pulse for um, any time a track starts playing. And that is not when it loops, only when it starts playing. And again, I can do that on a track by track basis. I could say one, two, three, and four is gonna be control start. I'll leave it as just one and two. Um, and similarly, the control end emits a pulse when the track ends. So, and I can turn that on by a track by track basis. Um, in this case, I've got track one and two set up to pulse at the start and at the end of playback. Um, I'm gonna set control play, which means it's active for the entire time the track is playing. Um, I could set control play for th track three and four. So what that means is track one and two are gonna pulse at the beginning and the end, and the uh, track three and four will actually turn on the control output for the entire duration of playback. And in the case where a track is looping, I can turn on a control loop, which means it'll pulse at the loop point, not just when it starts and ends. So this allows me to have animation or any kind of automation connected to the control output that can start when a track begins and then not trigger as long as it's looping. Or in this case, I could turn it on for uh, when it loops. So in this case, I've got loop time for or controlling, controlling the output um, anytime a track loops. So I got track one and two. Now, in the other Dream Players, our times are set for all tracks. In the Professional, you can actually set the control pulse time separately for each of the four control outputs. So, and this is in milliseconds. So that means when it emits a pulse, so for example, at control start emits the pulse for track one, here I've got control pulse one is 200, which means 200 milliseconds. Um, I've got control one and two set for 200 milliseconds, and then control output three and four 
are set for 500 milliseconds. Now, if you remember, I have uh, track one and two set up for pulsing and track three and four actually set up for control on play, which means they'll stay on the whole time. So this 500 number really won't do anything because it's on the, the control output for three and four is on the whole time it's playing. So those are different ways that you can configure all the different control outputs with different times um, and different times by track. Some of the uh, playback configurations, um, and this would be things that would affect the Dream Player Professional on playback. Um, first is a function called no fade. And what that does is it tells the Dream Player not to fade out and not to fade in whenever it sees a trigger on that track. It actually just literally does a zero second fade or just a chop edit if you want to think of it that way. So I could delete my little pound sign and say no fade on track one and four. So that will make track one and four just chop at the beginning and the end whenever it's triggered as opposed to fading in and fading out. So there's certain applications that this actually makes a lot of sense. Now since we're talking about fading we can set the fade times and the fade times can be set separately for each track. Um, if I set fade time without a number, so fade time equals 2000, that's in milliseconds. This is controlling how long the dream player uh, takes to fade out. So that's a fade out time. Um, if you say fade time equals 2000, that means a two second fade, 2000 milliseconds, two second fade um, for all tracks. I could also actually set this separately for each track. So we could set um, something like this and say track one is going to fade for one second or 1,000 milliseconds, but track three will fade out in five seconds. So I can actually set the fade in, fade out time for every track individually. And as you could probably predict, there's also a fade in time for each one of those tracks. So fade in time is very similar to fade out time. Um, so if you think about the resume, when we were talking about resume before, if you stop a file and it fades out, and then you start another file and it resumes, it'll fade back in. So this allows you to set the fade times individually for all four tracks. Um, in this case, I've got um, fade time for track one and two set for 500 milliseconds or a half a second. Um, and you can see how I put fade time one and fade time two equals um, as opposed to fade time equals. So if you say fade time equals 2000, that'll be for all tracks. If you say a specific number like fade time one, two, three, or four equals a time, then that'll set it for the track specifically. And all these things are commented in the config file so that you should be able to figure that out just by editing the sample. Um, so that covers all of our playback um, parameters except for volume. So important is to be able to have a master volume setting. So here we have a master volume equals a number. That number is from really 10% to 100%. Um, having a 0% master volume would effectively mean the Dream Player is not doing anything, so that would be kind of silly. Um, if you comment this out, the default will be 100%. Um, in this case, I've got master volume set for 100. Um, I could use this to adjust my level to say 50%, and that'll give me a 50% master output volume. And that applies to all tracks, all playbacks. In the professional, we also allow you to set the track volume by track. So I can actually say the master volume is 50%. Well, let's put that back to 100. Master volume is 100%. Um, but each one of the tracks, I might want to adjust separately. I can set the track volume for all tracks together, like we did before in the fade time where I say track volume equals, in this case, track volume equals 75. So that would set all track outputs to 75% volume. But I want to show you that you can actually do this on a track by track basis. So I could say track volume zero, which is my background track. I could set track volume zero to say 50% because that's my background. So let's set that a little bit lower. Um, and then each one of my individual four trigger tracks, I can set for um, any, any other number. So this allows you to really, um, in the config file, set a mixer. So I could say 75% for track one. Track two might have been recorded a little low, so we'll make it 80%. Tra 
track three is really, well, I'll, I'll say that's too loud, so we'll set that for 50%. And track four, um, we'll just put that back actually 75%. Um, the default, if you comment all these out, will be 75% um, for each of the track volumes. Now you might ask, why don't you just set everything for 100%? What's the sense in this? And that's because if each one of those four files are recorded at you know, a normal digital full scale, like a, a commercial CD is recorded, the four tracks added together will be too much volume for the output. And you'll actually hear it start to compress the output. It doesn't clip or, or um, crunch or anything like that. Um, we did do a soft software limiter internally so that it prevents it from having really bad audio anomalies. However, um, it's advisable to set these um, something less than 100% if you're going to be playing back multiple tracks at the same time. <clears throat> if your application is only ever going to have, say, a uh, track one playback um, from the Dream Player Pro, then you could set tr the single track to 100%. Um, so you could play around with these numbers, and this is you know, a software way for you to configure the mixer of the four tracks mixing together. And that's the end of the config file. Okay, I know that was a lot of information. You can see that there's a lot of capabilities in the configuration file for the Dream Player Professional. I just want to let you know, you can delete the config file and the Dream Player will still play sounds. So don't get lost by having to edit this massive configuration file if you put a WAV file on this card and call it one dash file name, put it in the pro, it'll play. So thanks for watching. I know that was a lot of information to get through, but keep your eye on our website for any new updates and new information. And check us out at www.pricom.com. Thanks for watching.